when you're doing some type of lower level troubleshooting, a loopback plug can be really, really useful. You might have a diagnostics program that is specifically designed to work with a loopback plug, or you may be fooling your application into sending data out just to see what type of response might come back after you send it through the loopback. If you're using a serial, an RS-232, whether it's a 9-pin or a 25-pin connection, then you've probably used a loopback plug if you've ever needed to troubleshoot one of those. You're sending data out of connection and sending right back in to make sure that the amount of data you're sending out matches exactly the amount of data that it is seeing coming inside once it comes back through the loopback. You can also use these for network connections. Whether you're using T1 connections or Ethernet connections, they're very, very useful to have when you're trying to troubleshoot pieces of hardware. It's important to keep in mind that these are not crossover cables. With an Ethernet connection, you may recall in a previous video, we reversed the transmit and the receive pairs so that you could directly connect two devices without having a switch or having a hub in the middle of those. This type of connection is designed so that you're able to send out information and receive exactly that information that you have sent. So this is not going to another machine. You're sending it effectively to yourself. You usually won't need a loopback plug or a loopback cable until you have a problem. You need to troubleshoot a piece of hardware, or you need to troubleshoot a long run of cable to make sure that the data is going all the way out and coming back without any type of problems. You might want to have different loopback plugs or loopback cables depending on what you might be using. You might need some for Ethernet. You might need some for copper. You might have T1 connections. You might have Ethernet connections. They may use different types of interfaces, and you'll need a different loopback plug or a different loopback cable for each one of those. And if you'd like to, you can make your own. Very easy to do that with copper type connections. One very good website I found for this is called spacehopper.org slash 5-n-1, where you can make an Ethernet cable, a crossover cable, a modem cable, a null modem cable, some loopback plugs, Cisco console cables, a lot of different types of connections all from that one web page. And if you're into making something yourself, that can be a very inexpensive and a very fun way of making your own loopback connections.